and it's saying 998 26 degrees So that was the final gravity reading that I took with my new Anton Parr Easy Dens density meter. And then of course make sure everything's sanitized. I'll speed this up a little bit. If I didn't mention it in the last one, I really like those little 7.6 litre Big W stainless pots. They're just a good size. They can hold you know, several litres of sanitizer and you can just put your fermenter in there upside down and let it drain. So I just move it into a better position for the tap. You should probably be more gentle than I am. I'm uh, shaking it all up there. And I unscrew the lid so the air can get in and not suck sanitizer through the airlock. Now I have got another way I do it sometimes and I take the bell out of the airlock. I'll do that at the end when I fill the bottles. So you simply transfer it over to the other fermenter or rack it and you probably shouldn't be splashing it as much as I am down there and try and make sure not to carry over any trube or any yeast or any wood chunks or anything that's left there and leave it behind. I could have got more out of there by jacking up the back of the fermenter but I thought that would be enough. I didn't want to carry over any wood. Always good to take a sample along the way. Give you an idea of how it's going. Looks nice. Boozy, of course. And it will taste very different from, you know, when it's finished, they say. I just wanted to taste it because the next step is to degas it and get rid of the CO2 in it. And one way of testing uh, is to have a sip and see if you get any sparkling on your tongue from the, you know, carbonation because there will be a little bit in there. Just choked. <laughs> uh, so I'm just testing a bit to see what it's like before I degas and then I've got something to compare it to after I've degas. At the moment, to me, this is extremely flat. I don't think it'll be hard to degas this. It has been sitting there, uh, it's been past final gravity for a good three or four days now and the temperature's been quite warm, about 24 degrees. So uh, yeah, there's not going to be much CO2 in there, but we've still got to do the step. So let's get to that. And before we move on to the degassing, we have to add our potassium sulfate and our potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate is mainly used to inhibit yeast growth and acts as a preservative. It's used in many foods. And the sulfite bit is potassium sulfite. It's very common in wine. You might know it as Camden. It's active ingredient in a Camden tablet and it can be substituted with sodium metabisulfite. It inhibits yeast growth as well and it's an antioxidant so it helps to prevent oxygen damage. And the simplest way to degas something is to stir it. You can use a spoon. I'm going to use one of these stirrers I can put on a drill. I'm also going to use a guard. When I was a fitted machinist, whenever we used drills on sensitive equipment, we used to have a little guard that we'd put over the, the drill, over the bit. So when we were drilling, bits of the inside of the drill that we're wearing out didn't fall into our sensitive equipment we were working on. It was very important. So I like to do that for my wine and things I'm going to drink too, so I'm not drinking bits of drill and dirt and sawdust and things that I've used the drill on before. So I've just got a sheet there, sanitised, and that'll stop anything that falls out of the drill going into the wine. You don't want to be bashing on the bottom, so once you hit the bottom, just lift up a bit. You don't want to or need to go flat out, just a gentle stir will degas it nicely. 30 seconds one way, and we're going to go the other way.
Go back and forwards. If you do that 30 seconds, probably do that about eight times. You want to do it for about five minutes or something, four or five minutes. We're back in the fridge and we'll fix the rest up tomorrow. I've just left the probe ambient because it's, you know, the ferment's over. It's just to keep it at a stable temperature. It is on still, but it doesn't have to be taped to the fermenter. And the next day we have to add our chitosan. Chitosan is a polysaccharide and it's used as a fining agent. Um, that helps to prevent spoilage. And that's the same with beer. Unless you're bottle conditioning, you want to get rid of all the yeast in it and any other junk, because that can cause spoilage. And we simply add it to the fermenter and give it a gentle stir. There's no need to take the fermenter out this time. Now we leave it another week or two to clear. And during that time, you can give the fermenter a little bit of a spin to help anything that's dropped out slide down to the bottom. You know, it might be sticking on the side a little bit just to help it clear. But do that a good few days before you bottle. I have a bucket of water there I'm going to use as a sanitizer and I'm using sodium metabisulfite. There's around 15 litres in that bucket. By the packet, I should add around seven to eight teaspoons of sodium metabisulfite. You usually don't really need that much. If you haven't used sodium metabisulfite before, don't stick your head in the bucket. The sulfur it produces really, really takes your breath away. So I take a small amount and soak my corks in it. This will lubricate the cork, sanitize the cork, and help again with oxygen damage. And this is the same with anything in brewing. As long as your bottles are clean, they barely even need a liquor sanitizer. The sanitizer is just insurance. Make sure you start with clean and you should be fine. Put the little bottler in the sanitizer as well. Here's a little trick I used to do when I was bottling beer. Because I liked to take out the bell so you don't suck the sanitizer back into your beer. But you also sort of want to limit. It's, it's more important in beer probably limit anything else falling in, so I'd just take the cap off and get a little bit of sticky tape and pick up the bell. The bell comes out, air can still get in, put that on loosely, but nothing can fall in. But it can still suck air in for when you're bottling and taking the wine out or beer. Ideally I'd use a bottling tree, but that's not in play at the moment. I'll spray some sanitizer up there first. Probably overkill, but it's not going to hurt. And I'll get the bottle up. We'll put it onto there. Make sure your hands are clean, of course. But everything's covered in sanitizer. I am going to dump a little out first. Sometimes these locks work really well. Sometimes they don't. They're always dripping, so you might want a towel as well. Now, of course, you can use a piece of hose, like I've shown in my bottling videos, for beer, and put all the bottles on the ground and move it along. Today I'm not. Today I'm using the basic kit that you actually get. Well, they do give you a hose, though. If you said... I'm using sodium metabisulfate. If you're sensitive to that, use star seam. You can also have a box and put them all, you know, pull them out of there once they're sanitized upside down somewhere. That'll be right. But first, I'll turn this on after I put the towel under there. Just dump out any junk that might have been in the tap or around where the opening is there. So that's gone. Normally you do it in batches. Sometimes you can do it all at once. Well, I do it in normally like six bottles like I used to do with my beer right up to the top 
get one of these corks, because hopefully these have been soaking long enough. You want them in about 10 minutes. Load it in like that. Put it around the bottle. It's actually pushed it in a little bit too far. Might need adjusting if I'm not sure these are adjustable or not. That's quite far in. But that was the first bottle. So I wonder if I can. Uh, that doesn't seem to be adjustable. I might just try and pull up a little. Do another one. not too bad that's not too bad there's a little bit of a dent that one was better though as with anything there's a bit of a knack to it and it's easier to do this stuff up on a bench than it is on the ground obviously I've just had to put it somewhere where it's easy for me to film all right so you go through and you do all your bottles I'll see you at the end That one's quite good. Just pushed out a little bit on one side. This one's kind of perfect. I don't know if it, see it's just level with the top. There's another good one. There's more than that. That's all fit on the stool. We have shrink caps. G'day, we are here for the tasting. Oh no, I need a bottle opener. Hang on. Lucky save, we're back. Found one. We're here for the tasting of the wine. This isn't my wine, otherwise, you know, you'd want to let this age a couple of months, a year even. Uh, mine's around 13.9%, something like that. So you want to give it a bit of time. This one here was brewed by Key at Kegland and he gave it to me when I last visited. So this one's been in the bottle for a few months. So it's a little bit more aged and uh, ready to drink. Let's get this in there. Haven't done this for a while, I must say. <laughs> Should be right there. Let's hope, eh? There we go. By the way, this is a Cab Sav California. The one I brewed was a Cab Sav Australia. So there is some difference. That smells okay. I am no wine. Oh, hang on, expert. It's got a beautiful bouquet. <laughs> uh, it smells okay. The aroma is okay. Hang on, I'm gonna get this lid off properly because I want it to pour over the glass, not over the shrink wrap. Anyway, that was a beer joke. <laughs> I'm not going to pour it in an IPA glass. Although I should. <laughs> I'm going to pour it in a Teku glass though. This is a Keglan Teku glass. Um, I just kicked it on the floor on the concrete. They're usually very delicate, but it didn't break. For some reason. I don't know why, but it didn't break. <laughs> but, uh, and, and yes, it's not a wine glass either, but let's put a bit in. 
get a bit of air into it. Let me put the cork back in the bottle. It doesn't look like it's been stored on the side. Do you have to do that still these days? It is, the, the bottom of the cork is damp though. And it is coloured, so maybe it was for a little while. We should really let this air and warm up a touch. Although it's, it's very warm in the garage, I shouldn't need to let it warm. That's probably the wrong word. It is warm enough out here as it is. But it looks nice. Besides all my greasy fingerprints over the glass. Uh, oh, just spilled it on me shorts. Spilled it on my shorts. We're just going to find out if Star Sands a stain remover. <laughs> I think it has. I got it early enough and it's removed the stain. I'm going to make a million. All right. Got some veins. Nearly spilled it again. <laughs> I'm not real good at this wine thing, but I do love a red wine and I used to drink a fair amount of it. Um, way too much when I was a kid because my father was right into wine and I used to raid the wine cabinet. I used to swap, <laughs> sometimes I used to swap it with the bloke from school. His dad had a liquor cabinet, like a, a spirits cabinet. And uh, we'd swap drink bottles on the way to school. I was sick of the red wine for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd get his spirits. Yeah, but it has. It's got some nice veins, legs. Oh, that's, that's quite nice. As I said, I have drank, and besides drinking when I was a kid, uh, I did used to have a bottle when I used to go out with the missus of red now and then. We haven't, I've sort of laid off that a little bit because she doesn't drink red and I drink a whole bottle of red and then have a few beers. <laughs> so, yeah, as I'm getting older, I'm not drinking that much anymore. But this is quite nice. It's, it's sweeter than I expected, but the, the taste of the wood is, is there, the oak. Uh, I'm not sure which they put in or which they put in the Californian version, but I'd be, I'm imagining there is because I can taste it. There's a heap of oak coming through there. Um, I nearly even say cedar, but not, not as intense as uh, Sabro. <laughs> um, I think that's, there's a raw rawness to some of the wood in there. Maybe that's what I'm tasting, like a, uh, a young cedar. It doesn't taste, maybe, maybe that will improve with age. It's not bad at all, but you can, it's a, you can taste the timber, <laughs> the, the wood in it. You can smell it too. And when you swirl it, you get the, the, the lovely richness uh, from the red grapes and a, and a freshly sawn wood aroma. A bit of toasted there too, I think. Look, it's a bit prickly. I can imagine this being much nicer in six months, but there's definitely nothing wrong with it. I'm not sure how it would go in front of a wine expert, but as I said, it needs a bit of age. But uh, if mine turns out like that, I'll be happy. Mine will be better because I made it. <laughs> but uh, no, it's quite nice. As I said, it's a bit sweeter. I'm not sure on Californian wine, uh, how Californian wine's supposed to taste. I don't think I've ever had one before. I used to stick to Jacob's Creek and what else we used to drink? Mount Binger, <laughs> Cuba, <laughs> Cooler Bar. No, in uh, bottles, it was uh, mostly Jacob's Creek. Uh, was it the Long Dry Red, something like that? They used to have, I don't know if they still have it. They've changed the name a lot of the wines, haven't they? There's no, no flagons of claret anymore. Well, I don't see them anymore. Better go easy, because if this is 13% like mine is, that is going to knock me around. So I'll sit on that. I'll go and watch some telly and sit on that. If mine's as good as that, I'll be happy. All right, cheers. Thanks for watching. 
like, subscribe, share, give one a go if you're into it. They're fairly easy kits. They're a little bit time consuming, but you know, they're pretty easy to make. Give them some time and some love. Store them somewhere nice. And if you've got a cellar or a wine cabinet, I don't have either of those, <laughs> but they're neatly packed away in a box. Actually, it's just here, just on the side at the moment. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm getting making sure the corks are wet. I did soak them in sodium metabisulfate solution, as you saw when I bottled them, but I'm just making sure those corks get nice and wet. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks to my patrons. Without them, cheers. These videos couldn't happen. Actually, one of my patrons got one of these, one of my bottles. He dropped in the other day and I said, here, have one. So if you're around and you want one, come and grab one. I'm not sure how many I got, over a dozen. So if you're in the area, come and get one. Put it away for a while. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, and thanks to Kegland for supplying the kits. I have got more to do. I'll be doing them very shortly. Cheers. Is that what you say with wine? Cheers? Yeah, I guess you do. Cheers. <laughs>